Hi, my name is Gisli Torik, and today we're going to check out the Strymon Iridium, the Universal Audio Dream 65 and Milkman with the Amp. And we're going to try to find out which one of them are the best for an archtop guitar playing jazz music. <laughs> is really rich and full. The reverb, here is a dry. Here is on full. Uh, the response and the feel and that, that sparkle you get from this uh, Dream 65 uh, it's the same you can get from a really good deluxe. And I've not heard that from any modeler that nails it in that way. I got Dream 65 yesterday and when I plugged into it, I've, oh, there was a lot of trouble, but it wasn't harsh. It was kind of that sparkle that um, you really wanted to get the transients and the acoustic sound from your instrument out. It can get really snappy, but I don't think it sounds harsh or hard. I, I find it to be very dynamic and, and the response from it is, is just fantastic. I, I'm actually a little bit blown away of how good this is sounding compared to a deluxe reverb amp, the real tube amp. definition and the chords, everything, the harmonics, I, I really like it. What we want is an, is an um, amp or pedal platform that, that brings out the small details in your playing and this is very, if you just listen to <laughs> And if I'm playing very soft, the only few counts I have with this pedal is uh, the noisiest of these three. I think maybe I could take off a little bit of. It's not bad, but it's. It is more than the rhythm and definitely more than the milkman that it's that one is super quiet. It depends on the guitar. I think if you have a, a really thin sounding guitar, kind of a scooped sounding guitar, maybe the Dream 65 isn't the perfect match. A lot of us jazz guitarists, we kind of like the <laughs> turning to the dark side. We, we want that uh, more piano-like at least me uh, sound but but still we want some trouble or air on definition and sparkle and um, the thing is if if you playing a little bit brighter amp but turn down the ton tone knob you still have a little bit of sparkle and and because if you have a dark amp and a dark guitar and thick flat wound strings that's going to bring you into the muddy territory don't be afraid of um, the Dream 65 being a little bit scooped.
And uh, as you can hear, uh, when I'm turning the treble knob, it works. So let's move on to the Strymon Iridium. Uh, here the sound isn't that scooped. It's much more mid-rangey and of course that can be good for playing jazz or an archtop guitar. And as you can see here we have the bass at noon and uh, same with the mids and I actually pull up treble a little bit. So let's check a little bit of the dynamics. Let's turn the treble all the way up. What's really great about Strymon Iridium is it high res audio 96k and um, the latency is some of the lowest ever from an amp model. Another great thing with Strymon Iridium is you don't only have like a deluxe, you have like the round that is Fender and you have the AC30 and the Marshall sounds within one. So this is actually three pedals so comparing that to the dream 65 you have to buy three of those but right now we just focus on the fender sounds it's very hard to get a bad sound from strymon iridium you're kind of very safe it's going to sound good this is very subjective so i'm not saying like this is the way it feels for everyone but to me it's a little bit life less and not like that three-dimensional sound you experience when playing a real deal. Comparing that to the Dream 65, I feel Dream 65, it's more fun to play. It's more responsive, not as forgiving as the Iridium. It's a little bit more compressed. Um, some would maybe say duller, but you can dial in a pretty good sound, but you won't get that same sparkle. And when checking with meters in Pro Tools, the Dream 65, has more high end. The Iridium drops very quickly up, but the Dream 65 still has some information up in the 6K area. So let's move on to Milkman the amp. Here we got a tube preamp with a 12AX7 and a Class D power amp. So with the Milkman, you can just use it to plug into a cabinet. It has a speaker out. Uh, line out and the pedal out is perfect for feeding, delay, reverb, etc. It's about twice the price of the Dream 65 depending on where you live. But it also has a cab sim and it's perfect for recording because it's very quiet. So of course this is not an amp modeler but we kind of use it in the same way. At least I'm using it a lot for recordings and I know a lot of other guitarists are doing that too. And I also bring it for 
sessions uh, or concerts where I only can bring this and plug it to a um, cabinet. So it's very handy, very lightweight. Uh, but of course, it's twice the price of the Dream 65. But here you also have a power amp. If you're going to buy a power amp to one of these, you're going to get up almost on the same amount. Both the Dream 65 and the Rhythm is stereo, and the Milkman is uh, mono. Uh, that means you have to use, the, if you want a uh, time-based effect, you have to run them after and not in front of the Milkman. Let's hear some sound from the Milkman. <laughs> So of course, with the Milkman, you have an amp you can bring and just plug into a cabinet. Another great feature with the Milkman is that you have two knobs for the reverb. So having a decay knob on the reverb on the Milkman is really helpful to tailor exact how you want the reverb to react. So what I like to do is I have a uh, A little bit longer delay, but the mix isn't that high. Of course, that depends on when you concert halls, uh, playing in studio, but having that feature is very nice. And the boost knob, uh, that could be a kind of a boost that you can always leave on. So I'm actually using every feature of the Milkman. I'm using it in recording, DI out, I'm using for a cabinet with the speaker out. And I have used it to plug uh, distortion overdrive in front and time-based uh, effects after it. And that works really well. <laughs> So, as you might understand, the Milkman has been a favorite of mine for quite a time. I use it every day. I think if you want the roundest, sweetest sound, you can't go wrong with a Milkman. If you want a more snappy, bright sounding, I think you should go with the Dream 65. Very often you want that scooped sound. If you want an all-round that could do a little bit of everything. 
I would go for the Strymon Iridium. But I was actually a little bit surprised how much I enjoyed playing through the Dream 65. And of course, it's not easy to show on a video like this um, how it how it feels. So uh, you just have to take my word for it. Um, but the Dream 65 is actually very fun to play because it's so reactive. So the Strymon Iridium is a little bit more dull in that way. Uh, the Milkman is so good sounding. So if I only was to keep one of them, I would go with the Milkman. But the Dream 65 is definitely going to stay right here and I'm going to use it for a lot of recordings. The latency is no issue with neither of those. What I always felt about modelers is when you're going in air or using headphones, they're perfect. But on a bigger stage, maybe you're going to be a little bit far away from the monitors or the wedge. And if you have several instances that adds latency, because I know uh, when it hits 10 milliseconds, I feel it. And um, it's not that I'm not able to play with, but it doesn't feel that good. When you, and, and up in 20 milliseconds, then it's going to be in your way of your timing. Take this for example. Now I'm playing like the Dream 65 into the Apollo X8. It's another conversion. And out to McGinnell speakers that have a room correction. And that adds about 4 milliseconds to Apollo 2 milliseconds. So then we're in about 10 milliseconds. And then you can start to notice. I know I'm very latency sensitive. <laughs> um, maybe that's a diagnose. But it would be really great if you left a comment and told me about what's your favorite, either based on this video or based on your experience as well. And maybe after I watch this video, maybe I have a different opinion. I will comment on that if that's the case. But uh, please let me know in the comment section. And uh, thank you so much for watching.